Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the 21 April 2014 Board of Selectmen's meeting for the town of Hampton. There's going to be a slight variation to our, our, our published agenda, our uh, Town Council uh, will be uh, driver dependent uh, on uh, someone other than himself. And he suffered a, a grievous injury, but he is here tonight, and so he'll dictate uh, uh, those legal issues to uh, jump up to the top of the agenda to accommodate his driving requisites. Uh, at any rate, we'll move on to the uh, public hearing. We'll follow after Mr. Gerald. But we will commence with the public comment period. Those that uh, would like to speak on during public comment, please take the mic. Art Moody, <coughs> Three Thompson Road. Uh, what am I going to speak on? I got to speak on something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, a week from Wednesday, I saw an ad for uh, 53B for their quarterly meeting up in some uh, Hungry Horse Cafe in Rye. <coughs> and on their agenda is correspondence from the towns of Hampton and South Hampton, request to withdraw from District 53 Trash District. Now, I don't think the selectmen have done that yet in Hampton because you have a date from your Warren article last year of June 30th, 2015. So I don't think you voted, decided you want to, I don't think. I guess I'm not getting any reaction. But it's interesting that uh, Southampton also wants to withdraw, wherever that is. Uh, number two, after your bariatric hearing last week, $25,000 equipment that'll be sitting around until some ambulance needs it <coughs> to, to, to transport uh, large patients. Uh, I think it was the next day or that day that Manchester Union leader had a list of ambulance payouts by Medicare in New Hampshire for 2012, and uh, Hampton wasn't the second or the third biggest transporter by numbers in New Hampshire that year, for Medicare anyway, but Portsmouth, Salem was first, Portsmouth, Derry, and we weren't even near there. They didn't put us on the list, so there were at least three other or <coughs> the chief said two others were heavier transporters um, based on the state. And, and, and I was kind of hoping that you'd ask why the other two turned that down for the one equipment that's in Rockingham County and they gave it to us with your acceptance in one corner, one southeast corner of the, of the county. I guess that's about it. I see a stern look, and uh, I'm sorry I'm missing Mr. Griffin. Uh, I guess that's it. Thanks. Thank you, sir.
Richard Ballou, 9 Birch Road. Victor Mark, all of them over and over. We appear before you this evening. We had a small ceremony last week with Mr. Brian Gown of the Fisher House Foundation, whereby the people of Hampton presented the Fisher House Foundation with a check for $25,000 that was voted on by the uh, residents and taxpayers. Mr. Chairman, members of the Board of Selectmen, Town Manager Welch, the sponsors of Article 39 on the 2014 Hampton Town Warrant are extremely grateful to the residents and taxpayers of Hampton for the support and confidence that has been extended to the Fisher House Foundation. This is a proud moment in the timeline of history for the town of Hampton as this community extends its support of the Fisher House Foundation and it sends a clear message to the brave men and women of all branches of the service that in their hour of need they will not be forgotten. Sergeant Jeffrey Kirk, United States Marine Corps, was 24 years old when he was taken from us on December 12, 2004. Sergeant Kirk was assigned to the 3rd Battalion 5th Marine Regiment, 1st Marine Division. He lost his life on the battlefield in Anbar Province, Iraq, and he was laid to rest at the Port Hudson National Cemetery in Zachary, Louisiana. It was Sergeant Kirk that had a saying his family said that he lived by that to me and this group is an example of what the town of Hampton and the Fisher House Foundation are all about. It was Sergeant Kirk that said, don't say I should have, say I did. And the Fisher House Foundation has presented the town of Hampton with a certificate of appreciation, Mr. Chairman, and I'd like to read it if it's okay. I just certificate of appreciation to the people of the town of Hampton, New Hampshire, in grateful appreciation for your support of Fisher House Foundation, Inc. Please accept our sincere praise and heartfelt gratitude for your exceptional dedication to improve the quality of life. Our greatest national treasure, our military servicemen and women and their loved ones. The Fisher family, the many servicemen and women, veterans and their families who will benefit from your efforts Join us in expressing our collective appreciation for your support. Thank you. David A. Coca, President, April 14th, 2014. So, this is to be presented to the, to the people of Hampton, Mr. Chairman. Can you come around, Mr. Lou? Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. DeMarco. Thank you very much. On yes, sir. The people of Hampton. Yes, Great sir. work. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. you so very much. And thank you both for your service, both to the town and your country. I'd just like to add one thing to it. Uh, Hampton should be pretty proud because, you know, we do three things that I don't think any community has, does here. We have that 9-11 uh, for the war on uh, freedom that we've done, and they come from all over the country to view that. We do the surfing for the disabled vets, mm -hmm. and now we have done this. Uh, the representative from Fisher House told us that he's beyond words to be able to thank the town for what they've done in the past and in the present. And I think we should all be proud of our residents here. And thank you for all those who have supported it. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Further public comment, sir. Thank you. I'm Jay Diener, 206 Woodland Road. I'm here as chairman of the Conservation Commission. I saw at your meeting last week that apparently there was some um, confusion or, or lack of uh, communication regarding the timeline of events and exactly what approvals were granted for the revetment project at 1042 Ocean Boulevard. So I thought I'd come and just quickly try to clear that up a little bit. Um, I apologize if this has been done previously. I know Ray Ande on our conservation coordinator had sent out some information. I don't know if you've received it and had a chance to take a look at it as of yet. Um, 
Last April, the applicant came before the Conservation Commission um, with a special permit for a revetment um, reconstruction. We approved that. We sent it on to the planning board. They approved that. Later in the summer, um, on a uh, inspection down on the beach, Miss Down found that the wall that was constructed was, in fact, different from what had been planned to be constructed. The applicant came back with an after-the-fact permit application in, uh, in October of last year. The Conservation Commission recommended to the Planning Board that they not approve it. The Planning Board did send it forward to the um, Board of Selectmen with their approval. I understand now that there is some additional work being planned on that revetment. We have not seen it, so we have not had the opportunity to comment on it one way or the other. And as far as I know, that's pretty much current. I don't know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to take them now, or if you want me to stick around, I'll be happy to do that, too. Our format is if you'd like to stay around, uh, then comment when it comes up on the agenda. That would be great. I'll be happy to. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Any further public comment this evening? Okay. Stand by, Attorney Gerald. We're just going to do an announcements in community calendar. So. Yes, the board would like to extend its sympathy to the Tinius family for the passing of their mother, Kay, who was a li lifelong resident and productive life. And ex likewise, extend our condolences and special thoughts to the family of Dan McCarran from the Public Works Department, who passed away last week. Yes, uh, uh, I was uh, asked by the daughter-in-law of uh, Cliff Pratt to mention that the uh, memorial service is this Saturday, April 26, at 4 p.m. at the Hampton uh, First Congr uh, Congregational Church. The other thing I had was that this Saturday on the 26th at 3 p.m. at the Tuck Museum, they are having, uh, the Vikings are coming, and they are having a, if you want to learn about the early explorers like Leap and Thorwald Erickson, uh, who were here over a thousand years ago, who sailed along the coast of North America. See Hampton's Thorwald Rock, which became a local legend, as the Victorians dreamed about Viking exploration, too. This is a free family event, Saturday, the 26th, from noon to 3 at the Tuck Museum. Call 926-2543 uh, call for more information. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Welch, any public no, announcements? Sir. Thank you very much. And Mr. Gerald. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Tinker has promised me lunch if he can do <laughs> 30 seconds worth of abatements first. Three minutes. <laughs> Sir, lunch is on you. <laughs> and the clock is counting. Okay. I, I presented um, eight um, 2013 abatements for your review and approval. Five of those um, with recommended refunds in the amount of $1,430.01. Three of them uh, recommended denials. Um, any questions, I can answer those now for you. Selectman Woolsey. I also move that we uh, approve the uh, Chief Assessor's uh, recommendation to uh, approve six abatements that he has designated and the denial of three. A second? Second. There's five. Five and three. Five and three. I'm sorry. Five and three. Yeah. Further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. See you. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, you have an order on your agenda, I believe, uh, a public hearing on the approval of the tree warden's rules and regulations. Uh, that and one other matter that I have involve the public works director. Um, so if we might. Sir, the floor is yours. Please, please dictate. So uh, this, I believe, is a repeat public hearing. Uh, we've had one about two weeks ago regarding these same rules and regulations. And my understanding, Mr. Chairman, was that there was not uh, the minutes didn't reflect any way that there was an opening for public comment on these. And so. Thank you, sir. And, and, and having heard uh, from the Esquire, is there any public comment on well, the approval of tree wardens? We open the public hearing Please at, open. Se at 7 18 p.m. Thank you, ma'am. Approval of tree warden rules and regulations relative to public tree preservation and protection. Is there any public comment? It's yes, Mr. Moody. Hi, Art Modi. 
I didn't public comment when this was on the agenda <coughs> as a public hearing later on, so <laughs> I'll remember that the next time. <coughs> uh, it's four pages, five, four or five pages, and I'm going to make some comments. Uh, I don't expect any, uh, you, you can just get it on the record. Uh, First of all, uh, your approval of uh, DPW director is tree warden. I kind of, my, my own personal opinion is that he has enough on his plate <laughs> besides being tree warden, which is an ex-officio member on your upcoming town forest committee by law. Uh, and his first job, I would say, was on page two, which uh, are numbered. None of these sections are numbered or pages aren't numbered. <coughs> uh, the first thing I guess he's going to do is uh, have a uh, inventory of all public shade and ornamental trees located on public property. <coughs> That's overkill if I've ever heard of it. Uh, You are including the cemeteries in this. They used to have their own budget for that, but I guess not anymore. Uh, I, th there's a removal of trees on the second sheet. I, d I don't understand the uh, sentence in the middle. Well, actually, it's the first sentence that keeps going on and on. Uh, if he or she, meaning tree warden, deems it expedient, grant permission for such cutting or removal without a hearing if the tree or shrub in question is on a public way outside of the residential part of the town limits, such residential part to be determined by the tree warden. I think the word limits should come out of there. It's very confusing. The next paragraph, removal of certain hazardous trees. <coughs> They're talking about, uh, this talks about uh, uh, if the tree is an unreasonable danger to the traveling public, spread or it's a nuisance by possibly spreading a tree disease or the reliability of equipment installed at or upon a utility facilities. Uh, obviously a pole license, a uh, utility pole, a transformer or wires is it that the tree warden shall declare such authority and notice to the abutting landowner on, on whose property such tree is located. Throughout this thing, you keep saying we're just doing it on public property. No. And said authority, meaning the town, shall within a reasonable time remove the same without compensation or cost to the abutter. I think that's kind of confusing. He, he did say to Christina, he talked to me. And the sentence after that, nothing in this section shall be construed to relieve the public utility of their accepted responsibility of tree trimming and tree removal for the protection of their lines or for the construction of new lines or to alter the provisions of RSA such and such in any manner. I think that there should be a not in there or to not or not to alter the provisions of the, those laws in any manner. The next section, notice to abutters of a nuisance tree declared a public nuisance shall be given by delivering at his place of residence or by sending a registered mail by registered mail to his last known address, da 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 da. Uh, that should be certified mail unless you want to pay $11 base price instead of $3 base price. <coughs> There's no, no value in that notice, so it shouldn't be registered mail. 
which is insurance for something worth something, like a bearer bond. Uh, section trees donated. Tree water may set out such trees in the highways, cemeteries, commons, at schoolhouse yards. Boy, does that come back from 1800s? Uh, we're, we're saying we, we don't. We're not including in this ordinance uh, or regulation Winnicott High School or Hampton School District. So that should come out. Schoolhouse yards. Each of the school districts has their own facilities manager, and I'm sure they could handle a donated tree. Um, there's also a section in here on uh, we can pay in a butter to clean up the brush in the right beside the right away. That's interesting. Uh, disposal of brush. <coughs> third sheet. Uh, the word uh, in the third line should be assess, not access. Asset, a asset. Assess the costs, not access the costs. They're saying that uh, very confusing, awkward sentence: cutting and disposal of public trees. <coughs> very, very awkward. Whenever permission is granted by the tree warden for the cutting or trimming of public shade or ornamental trees for utility line clearance. Town of Hampton cutting and trimming the materials that are clipped are chipped shall be the town property and the tree chip shall be deposited at the town of Hampton Public Works facility as directed by town personnel at the site. That, that very awkward in, in the middle and I don't know who is doing the trimming. Well, I assume it's the utility, not the town of Hampton. And there's no penalty section here. I don't know whether it's supposed to be or not. And it, it, there's no numbering either. So uh, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Moody. Further public comment? Seeing none. Close the public hearing at 7.27 p.m. So moved. Moving on, Mr. Gerald, back to you. Yes, uh, just in case uh, the board wants to reenact these, I think Mr. Moody probably has a point where it, on the last page, disposal of brush, the word access the cost should have been ass assess the cost. So I appreciate that. Uh, other than that, the manager, had, as I had said before, did a very fine job of um, marching through the RSAs on this subject and, and putting them in one place, these sections. A lot of the wording, uh, I'd say 95% of it comes from the RSAs themselves. So if we, if we find some of the language arcane, I'm afraid that's the, our uh, legislature at work. <laughs> but maybe legislators from 50 years ago. So any, in any event, I think these uh, regulations are effective as, uh, as, uh, as amended. Thank I think you, Keith sir. is probably okay with the change mm -hmm. to assess as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So that, that meeting is closed. It doesn't require a motion of any further action. I, I, I would just say to, yep. uh, if you're amenable to the changing of the word assess, that you uh, reapprove the tree warden's promulgation of these rules with that one change. A motion, please. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with Mr. Noyes still here, uh, I'd like to <coughs> turn to an item that's. Uh, not on the agenda, but may be brought up under his uh, appointment, which has to do with the assessment for sewers, RSA 149I colon 7. I put a copy in your boxes today of an email that I sent to Mr. Noyes back at the end of March when we were considering uh, utilization of the authority granted by the townspeople overwhelmingly. Uh, at this last town meeting through the adoption of Article 26, giving the authority to the selectmen the same authority that, uh, that uh, mayors and aldermen have in cities. And one such authority has to do under RSA 149 I-7 
<laughs> with levying, assessing upon persons whose drains enter main drains their just share of the expense of constructing and maintaining the same or paying off any capital debt or interest incurred in constructing and or maintaining the same. Um, Mr. Noyes had experience with such a charge in Exeter uh, where he was public works director before and also has been studying up on uh, potential ways to calculate the just share of uh, for such a levy if the board was amenable to it. Uh, we obviously don't want to go down a road without the board's uh, prior uh, knowledge of that, but Keith, I think, can describe the study he's been doing of this and, and what might be done anyway. Sure. This is, <coughs> this is a charge that would um, contribute to the cost of the treatment facilities, including the wastewater treatment plant and the pump station. I should say to try to recoup some of the cost of, of the construction of those facilities. Um, it is a common uh, co uh, charge that many municipalities through New Hampshire assess or charge new development to help um, reduce the amount of cost to the taxpayers. Um, there's a number of different ways to calculate this cost and I did obtain some information from the Water Pollution Control Federation that has a guidebook on development of these charges. And um, I do feel confident based with when I look back at my experience with Exeter uh, and with these uh, guidelines that I was able to obtain uh, that I think I would be able to um, calculate what those charges would be. Uh, they're basically um, a co that you take the cost of the facilities and then you divide that by how many, what the capacity of the wastewater treatment plant is. And in our case, it's 4.7 million gallons a day. So you take the total value of the system and divide it by the 4.7 million, and then that gives you a per gallon charge uh, that you could charge. And then what you do is the state of New Hampshire has a number of tables that uh, corresponds the amount of use, typical use uh, for wastewater for different facilities. For instance, for a bedroom, uh, the charge or the uh, capacity quantity would be either 120 gallons a day or 150 gallons a day. There's a difference in how you'd look at those, but if you use 150 gallons a day for a bedroom, it's is basically as easy as saying, okay, so we've got the total value of the system, which may be $10 million. Divide that by the 4.7 million gallons a day, and then you, that would give you a per gallon cost, and then you would just assess a new development based on that. So if, say for instance, it came out to $5 a, gal uh, $5 a gallon charge, so then you'd take the $5 a gallon charge and then multiply it by, if you're going to base it on bedroom, say we go with 150 gallons a day, by 150 times 5, and then you'd take how many bedrooms the unit has. So a typical two-bedroom unit would have the, you know, it'd be the uh, 150 gallons a day times the $5 charge times uh, 300, which would be 150 gallons per uh, bedroom. Uh, just to give you an idea, I did take, looked at some rough numbers that I got from the town finance director on the cost of the uh, facility based on our insurance cost. And uh, these aren't uh, uh, accurate numbers, but we'd be talking about $6 a gallon uh, for a um, for a charge. Exeter's charge is $4.85 a gallon, just to give you a, an idea of, of what their charge would be in relationship to ours. So if it was came out to be $6 a gallon and then you had multiply a two-bedroom house, you would multiply that by the um, 300 and that would be, what, $1,800 would be a uh, sewer assessment fee that someone would pay when they got their building permit to be able to connect and utilize the town of Hampton's um, wastewater system. And so for commercial, Keith? 
And, and for commercial, the state also has, as part of the design regulations, they have a whole set of uh, calculations for different type of facilities. Like, for instance, if it was <coughs> office space, it would be based on the square footage of the, the mm -hmm. building. And they will tell you how many gallons a day for, you know, general office space per square foot. Or for hairdressing salon, they may say per, uh, per sink or per station that you have, you know, 500 gallons a day or whatever it would be. They've, so they've got it pretty well covered for all different type of facilities. And that's kind of set in stone as far as that goes. Wonderful. Thank you. Anything else? Now, so the Select question it. for uh, was, does, does the board want to pursue that route to the point of actual quantifying, uh, giving a, a, a more finer quantification of the charge? Yes, sir. Let's go to the board, please. I have been begging for this, as you know. Uh, since Fred, and I credit Fred with the inspiration, since the planning board in Hampton has refused to assess uh, muni impact fees, I gave each member of this board a copy of the Dover regulations and ex mm -hmm. that explains how much they charge. Of course, Dover controls both water and sewer, but the sewer right. fees are, are extrapolated. Mr. Jacobs spent God knows how many hours last year trying to do the calculations. And my concern is there is about to be a lot of building in this town and we cannot afford to miss that opportunity to bring in revenue for the taxpayers of this community. And I've been asking Fred, I know I've been pestering Fred, the poor thing, but if we can even do a conditional fee and, and explain to the developers or the builders, whoever they are, that once we get the calculations done, I don't know how long it takes these calculations, but we've got to get something done somehow. I, we've got to see these charges in place and ready to be assessed as soon as possible. I held my nose and fought for that 149I because I feel so strongly against that because of what happened to us with the sewage coming in from Rye. But the levying part is, is critical and we need that charge and we need it in place ASAP. Yesterday, last year, anything. But I am pleading to get that going. I will make whatever motion is appropriate, but we have got to get that going and get revenue in for this community. We've got to do it. Well, however, Keith figures, Chris, however they do it, please do something and get it out there. Do you want a motion, Mark? Do you want uh, well, can, we, can we please just go to the rest of the board? Thank okay. you. Mr. Griffin. Yeah. Now, when they do this in Exeter, and how much did you say they pay? Four four dollars and eighty five cents a gallon. Okay. And what happens if they've already been a, a business there? Uh, so any business, whether it's uh, not on vacant land that hasn't been built before, or right, if if you have a business, if or you're any just pr any property, <coughs> right. If you had a business before the development of the charge then you don't have to pay the charge. You grandfather it in. Yeah. And if you have a, a, an, an, a, an established business and then you say you sold the business to somebody else, you wouldn't have to pay. Mm. It would be just new entrances. The, the, the way this would kick in is if someone's going to connect into the sewer system. They, it's a brand new total you know, vacant lot. It would be a brand new uh, use. And that's the people so that would if it's a brand new use, but what if it isn't a brand new use? What if there was already a property there that was using something besides before? Well, if what if it's a ripped down house and they're putting a new one? Yeah. They have to pay too. Not if they've already been connected to the sewer. If mm -hmm. they. So if a business has already been connected to a sewer, uh, what it's and that someone buys that business and puts another new property up there, they have to buy into the sewer system. The way, if I may, the, the way I understand it would work and what we did in Exeter is that you would get, if you have an historical use of the sewer system based on so many gallons, in fact, you typically would have readings on that because you'd have, you know, water meter, so you'd know what that was. So if you have a, a use, and you're using 300 gallons a day, just for example, then that, that, that would be grandfathered in. You wouldn't be t charged a second time for that. 
But if you had a single family house and say that you have uh, three bedrooms in that single family house and say you use 150 gallons per bedroom or whatever the historical use is, but that you wanted to change that mm -hmm. to a commercial use, then you'd pay the difference in what the calculation would be for the what new the business. What the house used before. Right. So that would be like what's happening down at the beach where there are new buildings going in. They would get credit for the buildings that were already there. Correct. Yeah, Correct. case in point was 339 Ocean Boulevard. They took down seven structures having 22. Yeah, because I know that's how they worked it. They would have been given a, on a, it was one of the draft <coughs> computations that we <coughs> provided a year ago. They would have been given a credit for those for that equal mm -hmm. amount of use, and would have only been charged for the new usage. So, it would only be for the new usage, yeah. Because there's a part of me that doesn't. I don't really. Uh, uh, no one's really paid for the sewage uh, treatment plant that uh, has been built. So when the new people come in, they'll be paying for it too. In addition, they'll also be paying for this fee. I think the people have been paying because they've been well, paying, paying for it. Well, they're paying now, but we just borrowed the money to uh, and p paid for it now. So now everybody's paying it back. So the new people are going to pay the fee, plus they're going to pay their share of the taxes to pay for it. The plant's designed at 4.7 million gallons per day. Mm -hmm. We're only al really allowed to go to 80% of that load capacity. There are a number of days, including the first three days of this month when we exceeded for a daily basis four million gallons a day. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all due to toilet and shower use, but my point is we are operating on the cusp as it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reason for wanting to, primary, one of the primary reasons for wanting to have this type of fee is that, uh, it's not to me what you do with the money, but <coughs> the um, cost to expand the uh, wastewater treatment plant, namely two more aeration lagoons and possibly another clarifier, rather large holding tanks, is going to be very, very expensive and may be actually very burdensome for the existing tax base to accommodate all this new development. Twenty years ago when the last, well not twenty years ago, 2006 and 2008 when the last facilities plan was done for the wastewater treatment plant, the rate of growth in the beach area was looked at, well, given the current zoning, it can't exceed seven units per acre. Currently, it's clicking along at about 123 mm -hmm. units per acre, mm -hmm. meaning that it's going to quickly outstrip the capacity of the plant given the, current, given the last facilities plan to actually meet the future goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, w when I was here, uh, all of the, when they were get putting, making all the plans for this, they said that they had plenty of uh, space for f in the future. That's what we were told here at this table. Yeah, back in 2006, given the current zoning, but given the fact that we're now going up and out. Mm -hmm. So, which has, you know, is just starting to happen. Yeah. Because the zoning has just been changed. So for me to be in favor of this, I'd have to see uh, a lot more um, uh, proof, uh, you know, that exactly what has to happen and how it would be strictly limited to over intensification for a higher intensification of a property use. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just to me we were led to believe when they did all of that work down there, the $12 million infrastructure, that that was all that was needed for down there and that there would be no problem for there to be an intensification of building in the future. So to hear this, I kind of wonder how we were told otherwise before. So I'd have to see some proof. Reasonable request. Selectman Bridal. My, just, my curiosity is if we extend our lines out to Old Farm Road someday, yeah. are those people out there going to all be required to pay this fee now that they are, except they've paid for this system for all the years? That I mean, I, I can see putting a new development in it, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking existing town <coughs> roads where there have been houses. Yeah. Would, that, would this be something that they're going to get? It, that would be a board's decision. That would have to be something that the board would have to look at. Okay. 
I, I don't think it just comes with the territory. I don't think it's an automatic thing that, yes, right. it would be part of it. I think that's the prerogative <coughs> of the board. Right. Anything else, Mr. Bartle? No, that's it. My question would be, why have we never done it before? <laughs> or is that just that we haven't? <coughs> Well, actually, actually, the selectmen themselves have not had that authority since 1980. What was Nine. it, Mary Louise? 1989. Right. So ever since 1989, whenever there was to be a change in the sewer ordinance, it had to go before town meeting. Right. In all de in all details. Okay. Um, what the adoption of RSA 149I is is to allow the selectmen to address charges such as this without having to go to town meeting. Okay. Mm. And, and what you're asking for tonight is just to come up, th th once you go plan. forward to study and come back with, mm -hmm. with yeah. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a great idea. And uh, back to you, yeah. Ms. Wilson. The, the concept, Rusty, is not to penalize existing property owners, and I agree with you because I want to see sewer on the west side as well. I have for years. But if someone, whether on the west side or whether I did it, is going to add to the I, I, I understand that. Yeah, I understand but, that. but once you pay the buy-in fee at the permitting time for the construction, that's a one-time fee. It just get it's a kickstart, and then after the building is completed, obviously people are in there and they're going to be taxed like the rest of us. So it's a it's a, a good mechanism, I think, for getting ahead of the curve from the taxpayers. And what selectmen and the public were told a number of years ago turned out to be a lot of baloney so I'm not going back there. Thank you ma'am. It would seem there there is a consensus and uh, I, I think the board is uh, back to Mr. Griffin. Yeah I don't agree with what Mrs. Wolseley just said at all. I think it's uh, everything that we were promised has come to be. I think everyone's very happy with the way it has all worked out. I haven't seen any problems with that. Uh, the first thing that I've seen compared to what anything that was done by any of the boards I've been on that, uh, uh, that says something alternative is what you've just said here tonight. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I've seen anything <coughs> that hasn't gone to the way from what I was told. And Mr. Gerald, you were here. You heard them say all of what I said, that there was plenty of room for expansion in the future, blah, 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 blah. It went on and on. I never heard anyone say anything different than that. So I'd like to enter. I don't agree at all with what Mrs. Wilson just said. Thank you. And if I could just uh, wrap this up, there, there does seem to be a consensus to develop some more data. Uh, this is along the lines that we've talked about with metrics and uh, uh, certainly uh, a drill down and fixing data, <laughs> fixing costs. Uh, that would be the state. That would be looking at balance sheet items. And, and these are tremendous assets. And we're great at the revenue and income statements here. But uh, on the, uh, as we've, we've heard uh, a selectman speak at this, this uh, body before, is uh, we don't conform with GASB. We don't treat our assets properly. And uh, I think the board has is, is got some marching orders for you folks um, with, with, with some slight disagreement. And uh, certainly on the west side, uh, that, that would probably come under the grandfather mm -hmm. provision. So um, I think there is a consensus for that. Fine. Thank you. Yes. Stay here. We can't thank Chris enough, too, for all the hard work he put in on this starting last year. Attorney Jarrell. Yes. So uh, the next item is actually the first under old business. It is the, uh, the board's chance now to vote on what way to go as to the acceptance or non-acceptance of the drainage easements that were offered in connection with the planning board's approval of the um, Litchfield Drive uh, JSAN development uh, some two years ago. And uh, th these, uh, the drainage infrastructure, it, it, w we were, it was proposed as a condition of approval that the town be given a backup role in terms of the maintenance of such structures as the rather complex gravel drainage bed that is involved in this particular project. And um, the manager has recommended against approval uh, because our public works department neither has the manpower, expertise, nor appropriation uh, to uh, perform the maintenance required uh, for uh, such a structure. And I've, uh, because this has come up in other contexts, the manager and I have asked uh, Mr. Jacobs to give us a pricing 
uh, for the cost of such a structure so that if this board does not uh, accept for the town the easements in a backup role, that at least the planning board will know what it might impose on other entities uh, instead of the town, uh, which might include, for instance, a homeowners association <laughs> whose development uh, has benefited directly from that infrastructure and which could uh, assess its members, as in condominium associations, a monthly assessment to build up a fund to do the necessary maintenance work. Um, and Chris, I guess you're well on the way to, to figuring that out. Part of that, directly into the cost, the part of it is uh, request was made back to the developer, developer's engineer to come out, come give us the information that they had um, <coughs> cost-wise to actually build the thing. Now, and, and then we will only want to do a proportional share of that. But that is only one half of the issue. On this particular subdivision, the real issue is that um, there's no way there. Um, it's a uh, seven pound sack with a six and a, with the possibility of having six and a half pounds of building on it. Um, the only way to get to this maintenance or this easement in the back, this gravel wetland, would be to go down through the side setbacks. Mm -hmm. But the side setbacks already, um, the existing ground is a very steep slope. Uh, so we couldn't even take a dump truck down there if we needed to. And if it gets planted with um, ornamental bushes or <laughs> species trees, we're landlocked or prevented from getting in there. So that was the primary reason, secondly, from cost, that we really, on this particular subdivision, did not want responsibility from day one, mm -hmm. the first <coughs> plan review committee did not want responsibility for maintaining that gravel dwelling. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, director? I go on. Okay, thank you. Mr. Welch, your comments, and then we'll go to the board, please. Mr. Chairman, uh, <coughs> we discussed this, I think, unendingly in the Plan Review Committee. We discussed it with Public Works. We discussed it with Town Council. Um, the point, in fact, is the taxpayers of the town, folks who live here, uh, should not be put in a position to have to maintain a <coughs> private drainage system for someone else. Just it's the wrong thing to do. We don't own it, but we would be required to put the money up and maintain it if they did not. Uh, if they decided not to pay us back, we'd have to go to court and sue them. That's the wrong kind of relationship to be having with a, with a, with a, a new development coming into the community, um, let alone the fact that we don't have the equipment to maintain it, we don't have the expertise and manpower to maintain it, and we don't have the funds to maintain it. Uh, the recommendation was not to accept the easements but to vest those in the community association, which is self-contained within the subdivision, so they'll be required to take care of their own. Now, that doesn't preclude the fact that both the town, the state, and the EPA have a requirement to, to monitor the system. It's in the stormwater statutes, federal statutes. So we're going to continue to do that. We just won't be mobilizing manpower and equipment to go up there and, and, and do the work and put that on the taxpayers' back in addition to everything else. I think that's probably wrong. Thank you, sir. Select and Wolsey, please. Yeah, I am absolutely opposed to taking on any responsibility. At the planning board, the uh, comments were made that the, some of these systems are becoming more and more sophisticated, mm -hmm. more costly, uh, more, more labor intensive, uh, more difficult. And if the developers are going to build in these wetlands and they're going to try putting these things in, then the private parties are going to have to take control of them. I want nothing to do with this on the public level. Nothing. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Selectman Griffin. No. Sounds to me like we, we we won't even be able to get into the place to begin with mm. without Very going difficult. over pro yeah. private property and everything else. So yeah. I think uh, if, if they're building it for their 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 development, then they need to be responsible or be able to put the responsibility onto the homeowners association. So. Selectman. I agree with what everybody else has said. You know, according to what. Yeah. Can't do it. Thank you, sir. Back to you, Attorney Gerald, on the way out. Yes, I believe you have a, a draft motion in front of you on the subject. Uh, I would just say that the uh, if it reads RSA 40 colon 14A, it should read RSA 41 colon 14A. I'm just not sure what the draft. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, Is that available? I have not seen that motion. 
We have so much paper. It's yeah. enough to I choke one's mind. Motion. Do you have that with you? I, I don't have that one with me. That was uh, very kindly produced in my absence. Uh, I, we can we can reword that if you wish. I can. Can you? Yes, yeah, sure. If the board's inclined. Forty-one fourteen A. Yes. That's what it says. Forty-one fourteen A. Okay, then Fred has found that. Thank you, sir. The board of select of the town of Hampton, having conducted the hearings on March thirty-first, two thousand fourteen, and April fourteenth, two thousand fourteen, under RSA forty-one colon fourteen A, to determine the town should accept easements for a secondary position to maintain drainage in the Juniper Lane subdivision tax map ninety-six lot two E and 2F hereby votes to deny acceptance of said easements as contained in the preliminary subdivision approval by the Planning Board on this date, April 21st, 2014. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. A second? Second. Second by Mr. Griffin. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. I got a couple more, so thank you. Um, the next item to uh, take up is uh, number three under old business. Uh, as to the revised cable TV intergovernmental agreement. Uh, the prior board had worked for a number of months to come up with a intergovernmental agreement with SAU 90 uh, for purposes of um, legalizing an effort whereby this board could in its discretion um, allocate some funds that it had gotten by way of franchise fees from Comcast uh, and put into our revolving fund uh, for that purpose to uh, allocate some of those funds for the um, activities of SAU 90, an educational institution. And um, over a number of months, an intergovernmental agreement was put together and uh, was then presented um, on March 11th to the Attorney General's Office for its approval. And if the Attorney General's office did not speak within 30 days, then it would be automatically approved. Well, the Attorney General's office, lo and behold, did speak for a change <laughs> and said that uh, the intergovernmental <laughs> agreement had a shortcoming in that it needed a, it must contain a provision for an administrator or a joint board responsible for administering the undertaking. Uh, now, the, the joint board idea had actually been thrown out previously uh, by SAU 90's council, and uh, my very uh, firm instructions were not to go along with that because it's another layer of bureaucracy. It would have been two members of the school board, two members of this board, and then three other people associated with the technical aspects of things, and they would meet at least once a year and uh, hopefully come to a resolution, but we, we, we know how those boards tend to work and sometimes they don't. Uh, and so rather than sunsetting it after the fact, uh, this board decided don't go there in the first place. Uh, but there is another way to satisfy the Attorney General's office and that is to have a single administrator. And so I propose to them uh, that why not have Fred do that. Fred was kind enough to stick his head out for that. and. But Did you notice it was on the table? <laughs> Lo and behold, <laughs> that was not acceptable. But uh, it, it occurred to me that perhaps there might be a single individual that might be acceptable mm -hmm. to both boards. And so I throw that idea out to you. Uh, if, if we want to continue go to go down the route, we do need to satisfy mm -hmm. the Attorney General's need for the naming of an administrator or a joint board. So. I throw that out to you, and I think there probably is someone. Thank you. Is uh, there a, a member, Mr. Bridal, that would be interested? I wouldn't be opposed to it. I think uh, if if we do this, then it, it should be a three-year, and then that the two boards come together and mutually agree to who it will be the successor, mm -hmm. I would say, so that that way there, I think it, it keeps both boards involved in it. So we're standing by for a motion for Mr. Bridal to. I, that would be the proposal. Ob obviously, do, yes. Do you want me to make the motion? No, no, no I didn't think. No, I. Yeah. Mr. Waddell. Or even I'll second it. Please. Yeah. I'll make the motion that Mr. Bridal be, be appointed to the. To, to be administrator. The administrator. Of this intergovernmental agreement. The government, yes. What does that mean, though? Let me yes. just get a second, please. A second? I'll second. Okay. Discussion. Mr. Griffin. 
So what does that mean? Yes, um, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you what I think it means, Rick. The, the various functions are already detailed in, in a lot of detail in this agreement already. Mm -hmm. In terms of practically what's done every day, uh, there is the cable committee that has as one of its members now the uh, an SAU 90 employee. Mm -hmm. um, what about the m amount of money? How is the amount of money set? The amount of money before and now will be set by this board in its discretion. Mm -hmm. The administrator will not set that amount. Okay, so they'll just coordinate the other yes. issues. Yes, and the, some of the other things that will need to be done on the ground will be if equipment is bought using this money, then it will have to be in the name of the town, but will be insured by the district mm -hmm. and cataloged. So it's an oversight mm -hmm. function more than anything. Yeah. And just because I would like to know, uh, wh who, why, who wasn't Mr. Uh, Welch uh, approved by? Um, I, I threw that out and I received word back from the attorney for SAU 90 that they, Mr. Welch was not acceptable, they wanted the joint board. Okay. And so I'm... I'm As the town manager, he wasn't acceptable. But, and, and so I've, I've not yet thrown back any idea of what we're doing now, but I'm hoping that uh, given that yeah. uh, Mr. Bridal is a member both of this board and SAU 90, that w that could get it off the ground without a lot of controversy. Okay. My questions are answered. Thank you. Any further discussion? There's a motion. There's a second. All those in favor? I'm going to stay in. Four, <laughs> zero, one. Thank you. Excellent. Back to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the, the last item here. Uh, has to do with the uh, first item under new business, HBAC request to participate in right to know meeting share costs. And uh, this is reflected in a letter to, to the board dated April 16, 2014 by uh, Chairman John Nyhan, uh, which suggests that there be a right to know law meet public meeting uh, where there would be a formal presentation by attorney Matthew Upton of Portsmouth and um, who uh, is actually, of course, someone that our board uses for, for as our labor uh, negotiator. Uh, and at his particular rate, uh, Chairman Nyhan suggests that it would cost approximately $100 each for each of the three organizations, uh, which would be the Hampton Beach Area Commission, the Hampton Beach Village District, and this, this board. Um, I, I, I agree with Mr. Nyhan that on that basis it would be a very fruitful thing to do. As you know, I appear in front of this board and other town boards and give in non-meetings um, uh, some discussions of the right to know law and legal advice. This is more of a general approach and I think actually it's helpful but for both all these boards to hear simultaneously a presentation and to have the public hear it so that the public understands how they're administering the rights and no law in accordance with its terms. So I, I think it would be a helpful, <coughs> useful educational tool and um, I, I have some money in an outside council budget that could be used for the hundred dollars. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. Quite frankly, and I have tremendous respect for you, Mark, I think it's a lot of nonsense the Hampton Beach Area Commission was created by state statute. Uh, apparently they are being advised by uh, someone up in Concord. Uh, we've already been <coughs> counseled by our town attorney. Uh, the, I'm sure the um, precinct commissioners have counsel who uh, Sharon certainly works for them. Uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission shall assist the town of Hampton and the state of New Hampshire's agencies and departments in long-range planning for the Hampton Beach area by the implementation of the Hampton Beach Master Plan. plan. That's 216-J colon 1 commission established under section 216. I think this is a lot of nonsense and I, I really am tired of the um, overreaching of that entity. Uh, if their uh, mission is to uh, develop guidelines and enhance the substantial assets of the area. The Hampton Beach should be experienced as a clustered coastal village that provides a consistently attractive and enjoyable setting for visitors and residents. 
It should appeal to all as a clean and comfortable place that offers a high quality environment for a variety of activities and uses. Its natural resources should be maintained and its economic viability should be nurtured. Uh, let them go ahead with their mission as far as I'm concerned and if they want to hide behind closed doors uh, to consult with counsel, it's not my problem. The public can judge. I am absolutely opposed to putting any town money into this foolishness. Selectman Griffin. As a member of the Hampton Area Commission, uh, I don't think that they have anything to hide and I think this was a recommendation how it should be done. Uh, so I'm fine. If it depends on the other uh, gentleman. If you want, you know, I don't mind spending $100 of town money. Um, I'm sure that the money coming from the Hampton Area Commission probably comes from the money that was donated that was discussed here last week and I'm sure the Beach Precinct would just rather do it as uh, something that offers some knowledge for the people that are in the precinct and I think that they've been wanting to do it. So I don't see how it really would hurt anybody. Thank you. Selectman Bridal, please. I think the small amount of money, um, it, it's just adding more tools to the toolbox and I think I think it's worth doing. Thank you, sir. Selectman Waddell. I think <coughs> right to know comes up all the time. You always read articles about it. You always hear people talking about it. So I think the more information you can get out there on right to know with all the boards together and with the public, oh, I think it's a you, fine sir. idea and I think it, it's not much money, so I'd be in favor I'll of it. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. And the motion is, if you could uh, give us a synopsis again, uh, please. The motion would be to uh, contribute a one-third share uh, estimated at approximately $100 each to um, a presentation by attorney Matthew Upton to the uh, in public to the uh, town boards the Hampton Beach Area Commission and the Hampton Beach Village District on the subject of the right to know law. Thank you sir. I think that they're also going to uh, hopefully have it on TV and Matt Upton is also the lawyer that does the uh, negotiating for the union contracts. He's a very knowledgeable man so I think when we make the motion it should be for t under $200. Fine. Yeah. Okay. So that motion has been amended. A second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Odell. All those in favor? Four. I want the minutes to note that I am not only opposed, I am absolutely opposed. Thank you. And that means you're voting no? Correct. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Esquire, back to you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Great job. Chance. Thanks for coming in. And yeah. thank you, driver. Yes. <laughs> Mark, you and Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Gerald appreciates your uh, efforts, I think, even more after sitting through this this <laughs> evening. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Tinker owes you lunch. I think you owe a lot more for <laughs> <laughs> the driver. I do. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Hi. Wonderful. We have Director Noise from the Public Works <laughs> Department. Uh. So, good evening. Um, I've provided the board with a uh, very detailed um, yep listing of our activities the first quarter of the uh, of this year uh, and I also have my uh, staff and my senior management team here to <coughs> respond to any questions or participate in discussion about any one of those uh, items or any of the items that you'd like to discuss. Um, I did want to mention a couple of things. One is that uh, with the first quarter, we all know we, we, we lived through it, the, the snowstorm after snowstorm. And I just want to uh, mention the toll that that takes on public works personnel. Um, uh, it, it's one of those things I find with, with snow plowing is, you know, the first storm of the year, it's kind of fun to get back out and be out back in the seat and kind of enjoyable. But as the winter wears on, it wears on people and... Uh, in your well-being and uh, I can say it took its toll on, on all the public works staff and I just want to publicly thank them for the hard work and relentless work that they put into uh, maintaining the roads on behalf of the residents in this town. Uh, and then quickly I'd like to say following that is because it's not a lot of towns don't have to you know plow snow all night and then go out the next day and pick up trash and recycling. And with the weather the way it's been and the severe cold and, and uh, 
in, in, in just crappy weather, uh, it's really admirable that these guys are getting up and, and getting on trash and recycling picking up, picked, picked up, pick up. And uh, they've been doing a good job as well. So uh, very busy quarter. Uh, senior management team and myself were pretty much working on, you know, preparing for the town meeting, the vote, um, the budget hearings, and, uh, and deliberative session. So we kept busy doing that. And I put a lot of effort into uh, putting together the Warren articles, specifically the dam project, and applying for that $500,000 uh, grant through the National Fish and Wildlife Service to help subsidize the cost, or pretty much pay for the cost, or 75% of the cost of the Old Mill Pond Dam. Uh, I'm anxiously waiting to hear the status of that. They did say in the original information that they sent to me that uh, we should have an answer this month. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hoping for the best on that. Um, so the, the, the projects that we got going forward right now, just to give you a little bit of updates. Uh, I, I study down at the beach, Underwood Engineers. They've come in and started doing some nighttime flow monitoring. Uh, they, they missed the, the tide by one night uh, about three weeks ago, so they're coming back in next month when there's an mm. astronomical high tide, and they'll be completing that. But they're still on track to have a completion. I believe it's in about the middle of June that they'll be complete with that report. Uh, Exeter Road, CMA engineers, um, they're in the process of hiring a uh, pipe uh, TV a camera crew to come in and to televise the sewer and drain pipes to uh, determine the condition of those pipes and they I uh, talked to I got word by email today uh, from CMA saying that that should be taking place over the next couple of weeks so you might see some activity out there uh, what that's going to provide uh, once they complete that is a preliminary cost estimate for what that project will be. I do want to mention that that will not be the same number that we would have got had we gone with the final design. Mm -hmm. The preliminary design will give us, will hone in a little bit closer, more accurate, but in order to get a really accurate number, or you know, as accurate as can be at this stage, you really need to do the final design. Mm -hmm. But the previous board had decided to hold off on the uh, final design, so it's still a good number, and it's still something that we can use for decision making in the fall, or at some point on how the board wants to proceed with uh, th with the project for next year, and and uh, how to finance that project. So we'll but we'll have that information in plenty of time for you know, the, the, um, the budget process or the um, Warren article process. And then the last project that we have going on, um, besides the dam project, which right now I should say the dam project is just, you know, we got the authority to, um, to do the project from town meeting. So now it's just pretty much waiting on the grant and then we'll uh, be moving forward. It, whether we get the grant or not, we will be moving forward with decommissioning the dam. It's just, do we replace the culvert? Now we're going to get, you know, a federal grant. But in any case, we're still moving forward with the decommissioning. But it makes sense since we're so close to finding out the status of the grant to hold off for another couple of weeks before we get in high gear on that project. And then the last project that we've got going, major project that actually Chris has been working on, again with CMA <coughs> engineers, is the uh, drainage project down town and uh, we do have enough <coughs> money to do that project uh, we just uh, assigned the um, CMA engineers a contract amendment that you approved to uh, do the final design and bidding of that project and we hope to be able to start with the if we get good bids um, I think the Monday after the seafood festival uh, in the fall so we are planning on doing that this year Thank you. So uh, be open. I'd be happy to open up to any questions. Thank you. And let me just for the public's so we're under Roman four. We're under appointments number two with the director for public works. And this is the departmental update. Would yes. you uh, prefer to have your your key staff uh, if they have anything, and then we can go to the board for questions. 
Or are you all set for We're more all questions? Set. We can okay, just wonderful. Stop. Selectman yeah. Wolsey, please. Um, in conjunction with the Exeter Road planning, Keith, um, any contact yet with the utilities as to their part in the reconstruction process? Uh, we're contacting them, I'm assuming so that they know what's expected of them and if they have anything that needs to be moved, fixed, updated, whatever. Right. They're already uh, made, been made aware a year ago about this project and they don't have any major work out there, neither uh, natural gas or water. Uh, neither one of them have any major work to be done. Okay. At least we're, we're touching base on, on yeah. that. Um, the drainage. I'm assuming that because I, I was very pleased to attend that meeting that you held, the shareholders meeting with that, mm -hmm. uh, the residents along there. Of course, I never realized the extent of the drainage problems in that area. I'm assuming that that's something that will likewise be looked into CMA or whoever. It's part Absolutely. Of the fund. Big part of the uh, yes. project. Okay. Um, rolling stock. Are we talking five? Uh, pickups that are being sidelined. I think Fred said something about that. I know the condition of the truck that uh, Mr. Gingras was driving was disgusting. Are we starting to sideline some of these vehicles? I'm not sure what you're going to do with them, Fred, but cut back on those pickups and start getting plowing, doing plowing with the big trucks. We're, we're in the, we've just completed the assessment of all the vehicles. Um, we've, uh, if you will, a reassessment now that we've made it yeah. through winter. Um, Mike could elaborate more on it, but it's basically at the point where the five of us are going to sit down and see what our, our needs are. Uh, we are, one vehicle is sidelined, it's out back. One vehicle is sporting a new wooden bumper. Uh, so, my truck. Latest and, and you know, <laughs> keeping in with the theme. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're making do. Um, now that the winter's over and we've completed uh, all the GPS we, we mapped all the routes. Yep. We're now able to factually <coughs> look at the number of snow routes we have, the time it takes, how to rebalance them, and then the second half of that question is to rebalance them with what equipment. Yes. And that's part of the equation. Yes. So we are in the midst or the throes of doing Keep it. Keep us posted on that because I, that rolling stock is absolutely critical. Uh, and, and of course, um, waste pickup versus highway crews gentlemen what are we going to do and corollary with that is potholes 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 I am um, I mean I'm commuting on the Exeter Road every day to work and well, the pothole situation in town is terrible how are you going to take care of the highways with three men help well we uh, at the at current we just finished mapping the last of our the last four months we've been tracking all of our labor utilization yeah um, this next six weeks happens to be this the most problematic six weeks for the highway department given open up the beach put out the carts take down the snow fence put the sand back on the beach it just goes on and on and on um, start the landfill mowing etc um, after this six weeks after we get to Memorial Day weekend there is some breather even during the um, coldest parts of the winter we were out on a number of the roads uh, actively using the milling machine uh -huh. and we weren't plowing snow yeah. um, uh, we're using what we call our hot box so we milled down the sections that needed cut out yeah. uh, patched uh, a lot of that is occurring on Exeter Road and um, so we're working to hold that together until such time as that project right. kicks off in the meantime um, we did have just have a loss of one of our members in the department. I would imagine within the month we'll start that process of refilling it. But for right now, we are uh, fully staffed. We've shifted and, and actually promoted people up. Peter Reed has now gone from four days a week to five full time, uh, and that those are the <coughs> steps we're taking to to keep on top of it, if you will. I mean, you've got sidewalks. You got you shouldn't have to be out there doing the. Uh, the work at the galley hatch in November, like your crew had to do last year. Yeah. Uh, Lock Road's terrible, yeah. Moulton Road's terrible, Anne's Lane's terrible, and you know it's it's tooth rattling going over all these these potholes, and the the roads are in very bad shape. And yeah. I just how realistically, 
and I mean this because I know that you're about to be tied up with the big seasonal trash. Realistically, how many men are we going to have working highway? Well, just so you know, one of the things that we're doing to help define that or help determine that is mm -hmm. that uh, Teresa has put together a survey that she's sending to five other communities similar size uh, in geographics as Hampton and finding out, you know, um, how many highway employees they have per miles of roads. Mm -hmm. that, not that I'm, I'm not suggesting that that would dictate to Hampton what we should be mm -hmm. doing, but it does to give us a, a little bit of a, a cue to how many people that other towns similar size um, have on board um, for for highway related projects. Certainly, trash is the major issue, and you know the thing that I find most challenging with trash in this town isn't necessarily the trash itself. <laughs> it's it's the influx of the summer season, and the, what we're finding out is. You have almost three different seasons of, of trash pickup or mm -hmm. um, the quantity of trash and where from about the about beginning of October through the end of March it stays fairly stable but then from the beginning of April to the middle of June it's a steady incline mm -hmm. and then it peaks out for two months and then it drops dramatically not in the same way it peaks in the spring but it drops dramatically in the fall. Mm -hmm. Manning those swings is the difficult thing. If even it, 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 it's very difficult because you never know, you know, not you never know, but it can be different from one week to the next how many people that we need mm -hmm. for trash. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do and we've been working on it with the GPS and working with our crews to try to d be more efficient. Uh, clearly, you know, we could use another five people in highway to get work that needs to be done. There's an incredible amount of work that can be done out in the roads out there by, by staff. We just don't have the forces to do it. Sidewalk repairs, yes. uh, drainage repairs, sewer repairs, um, to road intersections, signs. Right, and, and yeah. you know, the pothole patching that we do, it's just that, it's patching. In order to patch a pothole correctly, you really need to saw cut it out mm -hmm. a square, and then it's like a four-step process where you'd cut it out, and then you'd put base, new base material in gravel, and then you put a layer of asphalt on top of that, of coarse mm -hmm. mixed asphalt, and then you go back three days later and you do another coarse mm -hmm. layer of uh, asphalt, the final, and then you put crack sealant around there. We don't have the manpower yeah. to do it right. So what we're doing is we're going out there and we're filling potholes, and as soon as it rains, the stuff comes yeah. back out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, if we had five more people, I could guarantee you that we could keep them very busy and productive. You told me, I think it was last year, that the town of Exeter runs 15 men because they don't have any responsibility for the trash. Right. But the, the, 15 man highway crew. We're, go, we're getting behind the eighth ball every single year because conditions are getting worse and worse and worse. And I, I'm half tempted, and it, it's the trash season that you just described and the curve that you just described is the most productive time for highway crews during the calendar right. year. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm tempted to, t to, to start calling you the Hampton Trash Department instead of the Hampton Public Works Department. <coughs> and I don't, mean that, I don't mean that in a mean way. No, but you've not. got all you can handle on that. And I'm getting to the point where I'm really concerned about the deterioration of the rest of the highway services that this town needs. And, bef and, and before I shut up, one last thought. Mike, great job still on the on the uh, Fornia Press. E the 24 percent is amazing with with um, yes, whatever the beer place going online, Smutty Nose. Great job on that, and that's in Keith's report. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, ma'am. Selectman Griffin. Yeah, do um, don't you hire in the summertime for trash extra people? We do. I we believe that that's the way it's always been. We do. 
So that's taken into consideration when you have those swings that you'll have the extra staff in the summer. Right, but 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 that doesn't add to the highway crew. That adds. No, no, I have no problem, and I don't. I think you should stop um, comparing the trash crew with the highway crew. I'd rather hear you come here and talk about what you need for the highway, and you know. The tr I mean, I know that you have extra people in the summertime when there's more of an increase. Right. The, so two, the two people that we're going to hire are just part-time laborers that end up working on the backs of the trucks. Mm -hmm. The real issue is you have four drivers, uh, Sharpie, Beacott, Coates, uh, and James Lawless right now. Mm -hmm. Um, if any of those guys take a day off or they take a vacation day, which, you know, they're all entitled, they'll take, you know, one week sometime during the summer. Um, it, we only have seven people on highway. It all of a sudden erodes highway down to nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and especially during the summer when we go, it's like all hands on deck for trash. Mm -hmm. So that's really the issue is that we are operating um, on the cusp on the upper edge and if there's any stumbling i.e. a truck goes down or um, two, two of the guys it's it's you know they reach their limit after 50 or 60 hours and they call out then then I'm eroded I'm I take away from changing signs repairing sidewalks trimming brush yep. mowing the landfill everything and it goes over to solid waste now that's that's the real issue well, I think the issue for the town, um, I think a lot of t time has been wasted. I, I personally know how much time has been wasted talking about this trash. Nothing has ever changed, mm -hmm. and I think you wasted the whole last year, and I, th I think really it was disgusting the way that that went, that to have everybody's uh, uh, input, that they wasted so much time doing something that the people have voted how they would like to see it done in the future. Um, I'd like to hear when you come in what you do need for the, to have a better highway situation. Sure. Um, and I do, I know that it's, there's always been challenges, but the challenges have been met for many, many years and they can continue <coughs> to be met in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think, as always, you, the, the men and women at Public Works do a great job, Thank first you. and foremost. Um, I think you are lacking in, in the help in the highway department part of it. I think uh, I understand the fact that, you know, when somebody's out in, in the trash that you, you have to rob from Peter to pay Paul, and that's basically what you're doing there, and, and you've got to a point where there are no people. So I think we have to, I think this is a year we really have to look at what you want and need mm -hmm. as far as, as manpower over there. Uh, for too long, we've and I'll say it again, we kicked the can down the road. Uh, when uh, I know when we, we took over doing the recycling, yeah. I don't believe we put any more manpower on when we did that. Right. And so that had to have hurt. So I think it's now's the time that we really need to start looking at it. There is no problem with the trash. You guys do an excellent job. I want to continue to do that. But we do need to look at you guys getting some, some help with the manpower then. Sure. Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, but th thank you guys and thank your team, Keith, for you know what you've done because the winter is hard and makes a tough time for everybody. And, it, it, and I think a great report that you brought to us. And I think our job is not to just go on and on and on about what's wrong, but how can we help you get to what's right? You know, how can we help to educate people, to educate the town and get out here and say, okay, here's what we need to do for the DPW mm -hmm. because people want good roads, they want everything, but they got to put mm -hmm. something into it, right? So I think, you know, our job is to support you guys and, and to help educate the town and to help to push to get whatever we need to get things done. But mm -hmm. thank you for what you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I got one quick thing, and I, and I thought of it afterwards. As we look at Exeter Road, are we doing anything with the Exeter Road Railroad Bridge? I know that the state has talked about taking that over the trails to rails. and That is owned by the state it really and I, I did communicate that. with the state to see if they'd be interested in uh, taking that down and they just invested a, a number of years, a few years ago, yeah. a lot of money in upgrading that so they said now nah, if, if the go. town wants to take over ownership and, and <laughs> take down the, 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 the bridge then that's fine, but the state is not has no interest in. Yeah, they don't anything. want to help out the town. That's that's. And that, that's well, they don't. They, <laughs> I don't know if I'd say, put, term it that way, but you know, they don't want to spend any more money. They don't want to spend any more money on. But I just think, as we look at it and we look at the downtown area, 
Uh, one of the, I see one of the big big obstacles is that bridge. I think if it, that bridge was lowered six, seven, eight feet, it would it would enhance the downtown area. It, you'd be able to your approaches and stuff for your for your turning and, and stuff to do there. It'd be much safer if it, would be it much got lower. Safer yeah. if it was lower, and uh, better visibility for the whole town area. Yeah. And uh, but now's the time to think about that while we're getting ready to do the the infrastructure underneath the. Right. The road and the approaches to it, so mm -hmm. it might be something that we at least want to look more at. We were believing that even if we couldn't get the the state couldn't mi commit to the financial portion of the bridge, that whatever plans we put together with our consultant need to take a look at, i.e., the approach and the visibility, with the idea that eventually the bridge will come out. Okay. So that we don't have to redo that portion of the work. All right. Uh, that's approach I just don't want to see us do it twice. I would agree. Uh, I, I don't want to see. You know, I don't want to see us spend a lot of money out there, which we know it's going to cost us a lot of money because mm -hmm. it needs to be done and done right. But right. I just don't want to see it done twice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Director Noyes. Uh, you lead our largest department. It's complex. It's diverse, and it's it's perhaps. Uh, uh, challenging in ways that uh, most of us don't know, but we're not in this alone. I was up in the North Country this weekend. Route 16 is a nightmare. Uh, it, it, other municipalities are facing this, and they're facing that scarcity of resources, which is sure. tax taxpayer revenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're, we support you. We uh, we respect your men, and we're thankful when we see them out there, your men and your women, at, at all hours of the night, in all weather conditions, and that you never stand down. It's from summer to winter to fall to maintenance. And Selectman Woolsey has your very best interest in, in, at heart as, as the leader of that department and supports you. And uh, all the comments that come from this board, uh, <coughs> and including Mr. Welch, are to that effect. So thank you very much for a great report to you and all of your men. Uh, you. We're moving on to uh, Bravo recommendations, purchase of backhoe and loader. Sir. So this is a good example where you can help us. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, have, uh, we have a successful warrant article for $385,000 to buy three pieces of equipment. It would be the street sweeper, a loader, and a backhoe. Um, as you may recall, just recently you approved the purchase of the, the back, uh, the, the, the sweeper, mm -hmm. and that's on order, and I believe we're going to be getting that around the middle of next month. Uh, we put the backhoe and the loader out for bid, and we got a number of bids in on those uh, pieces of equipment. And what I did was I set up, because I wanted to include <coughs> not just the managers in the selection of the equipment, but the operators themselves. So we asked each, um, each bidder to provide a piece of equipment for a week, the backhoe and a loader. We did a backhoe one week and a loader the next week, and we allowed our, um, our operators to actually get in and, and drive them. Uh, and then they filled out a form on what they what their preference would be or recommendation would be for the piece of equipment, and um, it was a consensus between uh, Frank Swift, the uh, highway general foreman, and his staff, and I think our mechanics, looking at all the parameters, that um, in both cases uh, Caterpillar would be the preferred piece of equipment to go to with and keeping in mind that you know this is not a small we're not a small time contractor that uses this pe these pieces of equipment on an occasional basis and they're not used for emergency purposes so what we're asking for is on the um, backhoe uh, Caterpillar uh, Milton Jordan I believe is the company uh, is not the low bidder uh, by about three thousand uh, dollars, but we are recommending to go with pay the extra money. We feel that the quality of the cat backhoe uh, would make sense for a long time investment to go with the cat, and the same with the loader. The loader is mm -hmm. a little more expensive on uh, the low bid, but in both cases. Uh, I believe us at Public Works feel that to get the biggest bang for the buck for the long term for reliability and the features that the equipment has, um, we ask your uh, authority to waiver the bid process so that we don't go with the, uh, the low bid 
and we're able to purchase those. And please keep in mind that even with those purchases, we still fall within the uh, budget from the Warren article will give us, I believe, $11,000 extra to buy a plow and a wing. Thank you, sir. First to Mr. Welch, then to the board. Mr. Welch, your comments, please, and to include its uh, adherence to the purchasing policy. Uh, it does not adhere to the purchasing policy, therefore it needs a waiver from the board. Thank you. Uh, to purchase the equipment that was recommended. Thank you. I second also Wilson. move to waive on both pieces of equipment. I'll second. Second. That. Further discussion? Do you recommend this, Mr. Welch? I do from the standpoint of the equipment that was selected by the employees. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with the CAT equipment and the other equipment that's yeah. on this. The CAT is the best performance equipment that's provided here. It has the best utilitarian value. Mm -hmm. It will do the best work because it has the best lifting capacity, the best maintenance capacity. And uh, I think the biggest thing for me is the fact that uh, Jordan Milton, which is just over here in uh, the Concord area, mm -hmm. uh, will be here in a matter of hours to fix it. They have very reliable Excellent. people and they staff the price right in hand. Excellent. And Selectman Wolsey, will you please read the uh, equipment and the uh, amounts, please? I don't your motion. think I have. Would you pass it over? Oh, yeah, right yeah. I'm going to borrow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we'll get you on. Huge pile. Yeah. Oh, dear. Um, taking into account these two recommendations, in addition to the recent sweeper purchase, please be advised that the total cost of all three purchases fall within the warrant article amount of $385,000. We will have a balance of $11,900, which we intend to use for the purchase of a plow and wing for the loader. I have also attached a breakdown of the budget for this equipment, for these equipment purchases. Uh, if I may move the um, awarding the bids to the uh, backhoe, uh, Milton Caterpillar, $101,500 and the loader Milton Caterpillar one hundred and twenty seven thousand nine hundred dollars not thank the lowest bid thank, thank you ma'am all those in way. favor unanimous Could I thank have you a second yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that the, is unanimous. I always second you Mary Louise you know that isn't that <laughs> wonderful that's why we're sitting here that's, that's good <laughs> that is unanimous <laughs> moving on to uh, Charlie request for bid waiver street line painting only one bidder oh. yeah. yes um, that is just one bidder. It's not um, that line of work. People have got out of that business and there's only one bidder. They've been doing work for the town uh, for a number of years. Uh, I think it's a We shouldn't need a big long gobbly motion for that. Thank you. Move to wave on the painting. Line Second. painting. Thank you. Street, and all those in favor? Unanimous. When are they going to start that, you know? When do they start uh, a couple of weeks, I believe, yeah. they'll start doing some of it. Probably have to get a little more. Yeah. Good. You know, I just will mention this. Uh, when I was uh, in Kittery this week, they have some type of new crosswalks that they've put in. And I can't believe how good they are. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw them over and over again because I must have, you know, in different areas there. And it almost looked like it, even though they were painted on, it looked like they were 3D or something. Yeah. Do they look they like bricks? Go. Yeah, they look like bricks. Yeah. It's actually a wire template and they actually they reheat the pavement and pound well, it yeah. into the pavement. It, w it looked like it was painted though, re like then red we, bricks. We coat it with red. Yeah, they, it um, was really nicely done. Uh, I'll check that great. out, Rick. Thank no, you for mentioning that. I wish the state would do it, but they yeah. could. I'm sure anywhere in town would be beneficial. Like the right in the middle of town. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things show up from a great distance. Right. I'll check it out. Okay, great. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you, director. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Roman four appointments number three: Stephen Ricker, Sandpiper Environmental Services, A, a ten four two Ocean Boulevard, Seawall. Gentlemen, please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. I'm to the board. Steve Riker again from San Pablo Environmental Services. We were here last Monday. Um, I had emailed a, uh, a transmittal letter to Chairman Bean this afternoon. Um, do the members of the board have a copy of that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to touch about uh, on a couple uh, topics uh, included in this transmittal letter uh, in regards to this uh, proposal tonight. Um, the third page of the transmittal um, is a detailed construction schedule which uh, this board wanted to have um, for this application. Um, as, uh, as discussed last Monday, um, the construction schedule also includes a tide chart and a construction sequence 
Um, I spoke with Dave McNeil, the owner of McNeil Construction, um, during the week. Discussed his concern, or I discussed the board's concerns with the time frame that we originally provided to do this work. Um, we settled on three days, um, three full days to to do this work. Um, those three days and, and some some of those construction sequences are, are outlined on that schedule on the last page. I've also provided the uh, dates and times of um, high tide and low tide to show that we'll be working within low tide hours um, on this wall. Um, I know there's been some confusion with with um, p possibly what was approved by the planning board and what was not approved. There were two separate issues with this project. Um, both were in regards to a wall. One was the seawall revetment, which is what we're here for tonight. The other, the other issue with the project was a retaining wall. Um, planning, board, planning board heard both of those uh, cases, so to speak. Um, so I just want to, I just want to let the board of selectmen know that when you read the planning board minutes and you read the the planning board approval. Um, it would be easy to confuse what is being discussed because it's referred to as wall and seawall and you could easily by reading it you could you could get confused on, on what was being discussed and what was being commented on. Um, the retaining wall issue has been solved um, at the same uh, planning board meeting. The planning board approved this proposal um, and that's why we are we are back here tonight. I also want to let the board know that the reason we're here in April and not in January because we received planning board approval in December is because we were told we had to wait due to new draft language being um, being written for uh, leases on seawalls in the town of Hampton and as soon as that those new documents were, were completed by the town they were forwarded to me with the help of the owner, Mark Gasek, we got them completed and got them turned in. So that's why we're here kind of three months late, so to speak, um, after our planning board approval. Um, I think I did include um, in my letter where we would like to access the beach, how we would access the beach. Um, we would use construction mats uh, for the excavator to unload. Uh, park and maneuver onto the beach. Um, if some riprap rip rip needs to be moved, that riprap will be repaired or replaced um, upon completion of the project. The contractor will also provide an additional worker to coordinate any movement of equipment on the ground and to communicate with any beachgoers that may be present. Um, and lastly, the proposed work on the seawall will take approximately three days and will be performed during May 7th through May 9th as detailed on the construction schedule. Thank you, sir. Uh, for the board's uh, knowledge, we'll go to Mr. Welch, then to Mr. Griffin, who is the planning board uh, liaison, and then to uh, Mr. Jacobs, and then we'll go to the board. Mr. Welch, sir. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> excuse me. This is a um, request uh, that you've been had on the docket here for some time. Um, the request is to do maintenance work on an existing seawall. Uh, one that was not permitted by this board. It was permitted by the planning board uh, at their last session, but this board did not permit this wall. This is not the wall that was this board originally permitted. Correct. So I just I want the record clear that what you're doing is you're approving a wall that's different than the one that was asked for. So I, I don't want any confusion over that. It's there. It's already built. It's it's standing and it needs some repair work at this point because the stone is either too small or it's in the wrong position and it needs to be replaced. Access would be off of uh, uh, Billy Joe Brown Park. Um, we would uh, provide for some parking if you decided to allow this to occur. Uh, in that park, we have an area walled off so that the equipment could be parked for the three or four days that they indicate that they need uh, for the construction work to proceed. Um, I think that's pretty tight schedule. I looked at it. Um, they're talking about the 7th to the 9th. Uh, <coughs> that's assuming a lot of things, including no storms, uh, which we hope, of course, don't happen because that will just add to the aggravation of everybody. Uh, the 15th is the last day in which this board has authorized us to uh, allow any work to take place on the beach. 
So we're right up against the deadline schedule. Short of that, it has to be after the 15th of September. So with that. Thank you. Mr. Griffin. So are you recommending that we do this, uh, Mr. Welch? I'm recommending that you make a decision, uh, Mr. Griffin, as to whether or not you wish to change the seawall that was permitted by this board but not built. Um, that's going to have to be done without an application coming before the board because you don't have an application for the seawall. You only have an application for repair. Uh, you have the ability to do that uh, if you think it's in the best interest of the <coughs> town to do that. I believe you heard at the last meeting that there's some concern about the design of the seawall uh, and it's not the best seawall that could be designed for this particular location. Um, no seawall is perfect and I, I don't want to contend that it is. Uh, I have some, some feelings uh, from my experience in public works for 30 years that this is not the best seawall that could be built for this location. And um, oncoming high surf coming directly into this wall, which is a flat wall, uh, can cause severe problems. We saw in 2007 what happens to a flat wall that's concrete reinforced <laughs> and it was torn to shreds yeah. by high surf. Uh, we almost lost four houses on the beach. I don't want to see this gentleman lose his house. Uh, I don't want to see any of the butters lose their homes or have damage done to them. I have some concern about the way this, this wall was designed. It's not designed to shred water off it or to uh, take the impact of that, that surf. Uh, it's, it's designed as a barrier wall like the beach barrier wall is on the state property. And this one is not concreted together. So potentially there's a potential problem here. But I'll leave that up to the engineers to solve. Uh, until that's solved, uh, I won't recommend anything there other than the one that was originally designed. Okay, and what are, are we going to hear from um, Jay? We're, we're going to hear from, from Chris and, and his okay. questions on it, but I, I, you as the planning board uh, yeah. member, I, I wanted to give you uh, mm -hmm. uh, deference. Well, I'd like to hear. Okay, wonderful. From uh, the other gentleman. Mr. Jacobs. Thanks. Um, Again, my, I guess my biggest concern is the timetable. Um, you've gone from the one day that we talked about a week ago to three days. Mm -hmm. And I believe those are the three days that does have a low tide that you can work around in the middle of the day. So it probably gives you the greatest working time. Um, We've added a piece of equipment as well. Okay. A loader, yeah. To kind of expedite some things. You know, again, I call out these... Um, the photos and, and and the work that needs to get done is those the the stones that need to get placed or replaced or added to are the ones that are at the bottom. Um, I guess I'd be more comfortable with the project if we had a longer period of time and we weren't at this time of the year, because I think to put in the kind of boulders that you need to put in at the base, the biggest boulders that you can get. We literally have to take out the pieces around it. It's kind of like sure. the, the classic jigsaw puzzle. You know, to get that one fit, sometimes you, you're moving ten others. Um, so I don't, it's, it's not simple construction. It, it's not like uh, where we have an engineered set of drawings. Um, in working with the contractors last year, it was obvious that you know, they pick a stone, they fit a stone, ah, that one don't fit, they pulled it out, they put in the, okay, the bigger one fits, now we grab two others. So a case, you've got to dismantle this in part and then reassemble. Um, I'd rather, see, I, I want to see it done as much as you do, but I'd rather see it done right once than, than rush at this time of year. My recommendation in talking with the other members of my staff is that we let Everybody who's got to do a seawall repair up there, do it after September, right after the seafood festival, if you want. But I guess it's September 9th, 15th, 15th, 15th sorry, yeah. to uh, to <coughs> November 15th, and that would be the best time period to get it done. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got their suntan. Um, the kids are back to school. They're not running down to the to the beach. Um, and even looking at the weather, I wish it was for your sake colder and linear in the next 10 days, but it's not. Um, when it hits 70, they're going to come. Not this past spring, but the spring before, it hit 85 in April for three days. We had 75,000 people land on the beach. 
um, you could experience the same thing. And if you do, my phone will ring. And I'll be expected to come down and have to work, serve my residents who want to use the beach, and serve you as a resident who want to get there and repair and maintain your property. I think we'd get a better product if we could do it September to November. But we have um, a couple small problems right now. Um, the biggest one is there's a couple rocks that have moved that are small that we're going to be replaced. Uh, they're s sitting literally on a staircase, mm -hmm. which will deny me access, or I, myself and my family would have to crawl over. Uh, I don't know if we, if for sure, l listening to the contractor, he seems to think he can do this in a day, day and a half, because I don't think it's a huge job. I don't know. I I, I don't know enough about it, but he seems to think that would taking some small rocks out, replacing them with big rocks. He's going to have a several-man crew down there, a couple mm. pieces of machinery, and I think he seems to think it's, it's going to be a day and a half. We put in for the three days as a right. as a buffer, <coughs> if you will. <coughs> and the contractor was? Dave McNeil. McNeil ex Excavating. Okay. <coughs> I'd love to... <coughs> put my faith in them 100% and that it would get done in three days and that it would rain those three days and we wouldn't have anybody on the beach, I'm not a believer. I'm well, the, the only other s small thing, again, is like I had brought up last week when I was here, the town did some put some parameters on access to the beach. Uh, you're given to May 15th. Now you <coughs> want to deny that. Um, this so just me. This is okay. up to the board. Okay, so I mean, I, I just want to voice my opinion that I'm a little disappointed with that. Now it sounds like it's May 1st. By the next morning when I realize that there's two more people up there and how much work's going to have to get done to my ramp and, and where this all this is going to take it to occur, I'd rather have see everybody do it in the fall. Knock yourself out. Have fun with my ramp. Throw the stones around. Make it look like the biggest Tonka truck project in the world, but oh boy, when these when the beach opens up, you can't. You know, it's like birds returning to the nest. You I know, can't I stop mean, it. That's I was down at Columbus right. Day weekend last year, and it was 85 degrees. Right. Thank you. I mean, um, so, and you're telling us September 15th. I mean, may we please hear from Mr. Diener? Could you grab the uh, microphone, please, sir, for any comments <coughs> you want to share? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> um, I can't comment on the proposed work because, as I said before, we, we haven't seen what this proposed work is. Um, I can only tell you about the issues that have come before the Conservation Commission. And um, as in the letter that I sent you, I think about a week and a half or so ago, there are two main issues that we have. One is that, as the town manager pointed out, <coughs> excuse me, the wall that was built, <coughs> I'm sorry, the wall that was built was not the wall that was approved. Um, and we're not comfortable with the justification that was given for the changes in the design of the wall. Um, again, as the town manager pointed out, what was built is more of a barrier rather than something that's going to do a good job of deflecting water. I don't think the cursed stairway is going to do anything to offer greater protection to the property above that seawall. I think it sets an unhealthy precedent for the town of Hampton if we are going to start letting people propose one project, build another project, come in and ask for forgiveness rather than ask for permission at the outset. Um, so those are really our two issues, that, that we don't believe that the wall that was built is, is an improvement over what was permitted, and we have a problem with the fact that what was built was not permitted. Thank you. We will now go to uh, Selectman Wolsey, please. I agree with Jay. Any further comments? No, that's it. Sir, back to you. Selectman Griffin, comments? No. Selectman Bryan. I, I think uh, we got to go by our people that... We rec that that give us guidance. Um, it, it's it's a wall that was built that wasn't to what the specs were. 
everybody admits that it needs to be f corrected, but I'm here and that's going to take, we feel, longer than the three days and I'm just not comfortable in granting this right now. Thank you, sir. Second Rodell, no comments. So the way forward on this is, uh, I, I think what you're hearing, uh, and I don't speak for the board, but perhaps there's a consensus, and, and that includes the Conservation Commission, Department of Public Works, um, and the Planning Board, is that there were approvals granted, that the project is not meeting the approvals, that this is the town of Hampton, and that there is a Planning Board, there's a Conservation Commission, and when those approvals are granted, they are granted for Project X. Project X must be built. So the way forward, at least from what I'm hearing tonight from professionals with 50 years in public works, professionals that are civil engineers and educated men like yourself and dedicated conservationists and planning board members, is that this project must, especially with the first one out of the gun, and especially because we're all adults, is this must adhere to the approvals to the letter. And it seems that this project falls far short of that. And on a secondary issue, and one that I think that uh, the town is uh, amenable to working with schedules, is the timing and what time of season. And that's not, that's not going to be easy. And this, this goes to the, to the core issue of oceanfront living in, in those exigencies, in those idiosyncrasies that come with home ownership in such a, uh, a fragile environmental system. And so, going forward, Mr. Welch, could you kind of bring this to a closure for tonight and, and where these two gentlemen can come and then you can um, hear from Mr. Gazek? Well, if we're going to proceed, then I think uh, an application needs to be filed with the selectmen for um, the approval granted by the planning board. That's assuming the selectmen approve it. Uh, and it has to come back here to a full meeting of the board with a full design, and they've got to go through this new design that was not permitted by the board. Uh, I think that's step number one. Um, should this board then approve it, uh, they also have the right to waive when it can be built because they have control over that. Um, but it may not be until September. I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, the the, the question is really <coughs> dependent upon the weather. Mm -hmm. I think there's no question, but if it rained, I think we're all golden. It'll happen right away. Um, but Could you reiterate what you just started with? I'm, I'm trying to follow your application process. Well, you, you, you went to the Conservation Commission uh, a second time, and you were turned down for the wall that was built. For the wall, yeah. That's for the correct. For the seawall revetment, correct. That's correct. You, mm -hmm. they you, went to, you then went to the planning board, and the planning board approved it. Correct. You have not come back to the Board of Selectmen to approve that design. Okay. I think you need to do that. Okay. What I'm hearing is you need to do that, that you haven't got an approval here for that. Yep. And they're not about to grant you the approval to build something that they have not seen, commented on, or had engineers comment on to begin with. I think what we're looking to do is bring that up to the more standards of what was submitted as a plan, uh, probably with the exception of that staircase. Um, what had happened is Dave McNeil had a set of plans that weren't detailed, uh, that was given by the architect, uh, and he claims he never received the detailed set of plans. The wall got <coughs> screwed up, I guess you could say. That's, that's we, obvious, yeah. We brought Duncan Meller in, uh, who is a, another engineer with seawalls. He said this, this wall does not meet up to standards of the, um, what do they call it, the Army Corps of Engineers. He made his recommendations. We have them, I, I think it's part of the original plan. So Dave McNeil agreed at his cost to go back and fix what he didn't do the first time around. So rather that. than him running away on me, yeah. if he does, I don't know. Once I get, well, I don't know if I'll get an occupancy permit with it or without it. Uh, the house is almost completed. I'm hoping it'll be complete mid-May. You know. Well, your occupancy like permit is not based upon the seawall. Okay. Okay. 
Um, to start with, it's not part of the structure. Right. But I, you know, so I'd like to get it fixed. Uh, like I said, I do have a couple of rocks at the bottom of the staircase, so I do not have access to the beach from my property. Can I borrow a neighbor's set of stairs? I don't know. Uh, I guess my answer to that would, <coughs> would, would might, might be taken to be unprofessional, but mm. the bottom line is that if you'd built the seawall that was originally permitted, right. We wouldn't be here now. Yeah. You would have access to the beach. Yeah. You built a seawall that was not permitted. I you don't have access. The, the contractor built it. I'm having issues with him. You're the owner. I am the owner, and okay. I'm trying to straighten it out. I'm trying to rectify it. I'm, I'm trying to clear it up. I mean, the contractor basically had a wrong set of plans. He was going by the wrong set of plans, screwed everything up. That's why I'm here trying to fix right. it. Let, let, let me kind of grab, grab, grab this, this, this issue back. Is, is the uh, the board's chair in your chair? Is that uh, uh, I think the uh, explicitly, implicitly, it's clear what you need to do. And if there's any doubt in your mind, uh, you have direct liaison to Mr. Welch. Mr. Welch has uh, spoken art in a very articulate manner tonight, and the board supports his opinion. Uh, the Conservation Commission does, and it's a black and white issue. And uh, barring any last comment from you, Mr. Gasek, and we sense you and feel your frustration, um, that'll, that'll conclude this episode tonight. Yep. So basically, look basically, what I, basically, look what I have, and then reapply in the fall. Basically, you've got to have approval from this board, and you've got to meet. Project X that was approved by both conservation and the planning board. Simple, period. You're the first one on the on this uh, on this this list. Others that build decks um, that don't conform in this town. There's routine letters that go out to folks. Take the deck down, or you're going to court. So you, you're not you're not alone. You're not being singled out. It is just a standard procedure. This is the town of Hampton. Thank you for your time tonight. You can file tomorrow. Moving on, Roman 5, approval of minutes, 1, April 7th. Thank you, sir. Thank 2014. Second. Second. Any changes? Yep. Page yes, three. Um, toward the bottom under G. Stephen Davis. Selectman Bolsey motion to approve the request. I did not. I motion. I moved to deny. Uh, Mr. Griffin moved to approve. And that's clearly stated right underneath. My motion was to deny on that page and then moving over to quickly page 10 of 11 uh, the first full paragraph um, finance director retiring soon need to sit down and meet with him advertisement out for a new finance director and town planner we need to sit down and get advice not advisement on these two positions and also then on page 11 of 11, there's no notation here of the actual appointment by this board of you as our negotiator. I think that little segment got left out. Because we have to be signed the union contract. Yes, ma'am. I think that that was that omitted. Was. We can make sure that those are reincorporated. Yeah, Mr. just Wells, reinsert thank you. that portion of thank the you. discussion. Any other changes? And that's it. Thank you, ma'am. Any other changes? All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 6, town manager's report. Please, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'll make this short. Um, <laughs> we'd heard earlier this evening that we lost an employee in public works. Mm -hmm. uh, he's passed away. Um, he had uh, 10 years, almost 10 years of service to the town. Uh, he um, he went home sick from work, had a massive heart attack, and stayed in the hospital for I think it was a little over a week, and finally passed away. Um, Dan was a valued member of the community and a valued member of our public works team. Uh, I've suggested to um, staff that uh, his family should call the retirement system to see whether or not he is eligible for his retirement pension mm. based upon the fact that he, he became ill and died in service. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But that was quite a shock to Public Works, and, and uh, I know there are quite a few people down there who are really still upset about this. So they didn't expect this to happen. The other thing I have is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Senate Bill 219, which is, is our bill that was submitted on behalf of the town uh, to speed up 
the deposit of cemetery sale funds mm. for the trustees um, is due on the floor of the house um, come the 23rd which is uh, Wednesday and it has a recommendation the committee ought to pass Good. it's already passed the Senate if it passes the house without further amendment uh, it will be sent to the governor for, for signature. So I think that's a very good sign. The other thing is I have, it was came in late today, but uh, it deals with a public utility issue. Um, there's a request here that to uh, put an underground line in, in Concord uh, Avenue, and uh, they've sent the necessary paperwork over. I've never seen it quite expedited as fast as it was today, but uh, sure. they came in to get this done because it needs to be finished. And I would ask the board when we get to the... Uh, uh, the signature for this evening to uh, to approve that. Um, and that's it, Mr. Chairman. You want a motion for that, Fred? Um, yeah, I think that's... Move to approve the application by what, Unitel? Uh, Unitel for a petition for, it's called pole line license. Okay. For underground service on Concord Avenue. Yes, it's not too wet to install that? No, apparently not. It's quite dry down. A lot of, a lot of good sand down there, okay. so it's, it's quite dry right now. Okay, well, I will so move that we approve. The Seconded by Mr. Petition. Waddell, and uh, we'll vote without Mr. Bridal. All those in favor? Four, zero, one. Thank you. And you're welcome. Uh, questions uh, for the town manager, Mr. Like Wilson. A couple of comments, Fred. The uh, two 2014 annual report. May we put the uh, information on Mr. McCarran in line to have a commemorative for him in the report? It's already done. And well, thank you. And the Church Street bathroom. Where are we? Uh, that is on the public works construction list, so it should be excellent. It'll be it'll be there before the facility opens. Excellent. Thank you, sir. That's it, sir. Nothing. Nothing. Wonderful. Moving on, um, Roman 7, number 2, review and approval of seawall permit 1036 Ocean Boulevard. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, uh, the board heard this last week. Yep. Uh, the applicant has come in and filed all of the paperwork. We're just waiting for fees, which is dependent upon the board's signing. Mm -hmm. We have uh, done the permits and conditions. Uh, there are five pages. Yeah. Of material that they're going to have to go through in order to get this done in September. Uh, it's quite itemized, it's quite detailed, and, and if the gentleman from 1042 comes back, he'll receive about the same amount of material, uh, which safeguards access to the beach and access to <coughs> protection of people on the beach, uh, protection of our property up on the, uh, the land where they're going to be storing material. Uh, all the insurance requirements are here, and we are. Second, secondarily insured. The name is another insured in all of this. Workers' comp is there for so the $2 million limit. Uh, as I say, there's a, there's a significant amount of material uh, that's here, and they have complied with all of it. So they're also, ready for signature. Also move to approve the signature of the 1036 Ocean Boulevard Second. seawall permit. Any further discussion? All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Any other old business from the board? Seeing none, moving on to the consent agenda. I will so move, Mr. Chairman, the entirety of the consent agenda, entertainment license for the casino ballroom, uh, elderly, uh, let's see, four elderly exemptions, uh, one new disabled veteran exemption, a disabled, uh, em yes, try that again, disabled exemption and um, three veterans tax credits. Well done. A second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. A final motion? Moves that we adjourn at 9.08 p.m. Seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Good deal. So did that Carl, how old was that Carl McCarran? He doesn't fool around. Uh, 54. 47, I uh, 57. 57. Yeah, he's 57. Okay, right around. Did you know him? No, this is 1936. I didn't. Did you know, and, 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 and,